Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today we are looking once again at the suggestions past the developers for November of 2020 and once again I just want to thank Coke Spray and his team for putting together this list so we can have a look at it. Last time we had a look at the ground forces that were available when it came to the uh, new past the developers but we did miss a part of it and the part we missed was the British light tank line. The reason for this is because there's a ton of vehicles in it and I think it uh, deserves its own video because well to be honest with you otherwise the other video would be about an hour long and also it's nice to highlight these different vehicles in order to you know try and bring them to the game so this British light tank line is made by Terek G2014 and yeah it just basically goes through tier one to all the way up to high tiers with different ideas in order to uh, bring them to the game so the first one is the Harry Hopkins now if you don't know what the Harry Hopkins is think Think about it as the younger brother of the tech truck basically it's a bit heavier than the tech truck it has a little bit more armor 38 millimeters at max and it also has a sloped front plate and also 30 miles per hour of speed also has access to of course the two pounder or the 40 millimeter that you'll be used to on a lot of the rank one vehicles that are in the game and yeah it's just very very similar to the tech truck apart from that increased armor and a little bit of speed as well. The next vehicle to have a look at is we're going into the wheeled variety in the form of the Humber. Now the Humber actually has a ton of really interesting variants on it and uh, the Humber Mark IV is the one we're going to focus on. The main reason is is because the Humbers generally had stuff like 15 millimeter uh, guns, uh, you know, Besses and stuff like that, whereas the Mark IV had access to the M5 or M6 37 millimeter guns gun from the US. This is the same gun that you find on stuff like the Stuarts and the Locust, so therefore, you know, it's got a little bit more punch to it, and therefore would actually fit a little bit better into the game. The other thing about the Humber, which is pretty impressive, is this one could technically go around 50 miles per hour, and also it uh, was uh, armored enough to be able to stop LMGs, um, but unfortunately anything higher than that would not annihilators this machine only had around 15 millimeters of armor now what is interesting as i said is the reason to add the humber mark IV is because it has access to the 37 millimeter what is also in this list is another humber and this is the mark iii now the mark iii oops uh, the mark the mark iii in itself has access to a smaller gun like i said before the 15 millimeter rapid fire besser cannon and this thing can only pen about 34 millimeters of armor at 100 meters so i'm not entirely sure how useful it will be in the game but it does have at least a decent fire rate so maybe um, it will be useful at low tiers against a lot of the very light vehicles has the same platform as the humber mark IV, so still has the speed still has the armor just the main difference is of course the turret and also the gun which uh, houses it the next vehicle that uh, we're going to have a look at is the Coventry. Now the Coventry is kind of an, a vehicle which is forgotten about but it is very similar to other vehicles that we have which um, are already in the game. The Daimler is probably the closest machine to this uh, four-wheeled vehicle. It does have access once again to the two-pounder uh, that a lot, of these, uh, a lot of these vehicles have access to and it also can go around 42 miles per hour around the place and it was used uh, during the war uh, which is uh, pretty impressive and also it was seen as an incredibly reliable machine which is why it was used so much and a lot of these wheeled vehicles a lot of these uh, four-wheel vehicles were used all over the place because of that fact because of the fact that they're reliable they were easy to maintain and also a lot of them used the same guns so therefore you ended up in a situation where it was very easy to sort out supply lines if everything if everything uses the same thing you don't have to stock up on a ton of different um you know a ton of 
of different caliber types when it comes to the ammunition you're shipping. Instead, you can just send out one massive load and that will have everything in it. The next vehicle that we're going to have a look at is the AEC Mark I. Now, as you can see, this is a little bit of a difference uh, compared to the other wheeled vehicles that we've had before. This one would definitely be seen as more armored. The turret that you uh, see on the top of this thing is straight off of a Valentine. Uh, so this is a Valentine turret. We already have it in the game. It's the one which houses the two pounder and also the coaxial machine gun. And the armor itself is pretty angled uh, along the chassis. And uh, we already have this chassis in game in the form of the AEC Mark II and also the AEC AA. So pretty much what you're doing is you're adding together um, a chassis which already exists in game and a turret that already exists in game and just putting them together into one specific vehicle would be pretty interesting to see. The next vehicle on the agenda is the uh, is another light vehicle or another armored car from the British. This is once again a Coventry, and uh, this uh, vehicle is the Coventry armored car. Um, apart from it's uh, slightly different to the predecessor that we saw before in the form of the turret that it houses. So the uh, chassis itself didn't really change too much, but what did change is they changed the turret they put a new one on which had access to the ordnance qf 75 millimeter this um, obviously increased firepower for the vehicle and also increased weight uh, so this was more designed uh, to provide infantry support instead of having to you know tow around uh, and tow around uh, guns and stuff you would have these instead which would be able to uh, drill out a bunch of performance against uh, the enemy uh, well the enemy position Unfortunately, it didn't take off too well compared to a few of the other designs which were around. The next one is the AEC Mark III. Uh, the AEC Mark III, very similar to the Mark II. Um, but uh, the Mark II is already in game as an event vehicle. Uh, so the Mark III is obviously a slight upgrade off of that. It obviously has good mobility. It has access to the 75 millimeter. It has a decent armor and uh, it's very, very similar to the other machines that we've seen. You may see a common theme here when it comes to these vehicles. Uh, the rank ones uh, sport the two pounder, the rank twos, they're looking at the six pounder and also the APCBC. And then as we go up the ranks, there'll be even larger uh, machines on offer. Now the next vehicle is a bit weird and wacky and it moves away from the wheeled uh, vehicles of the armored cars and and brings us what can only be classed as Frankenstein's abomination. Uh, so what this is, is uh, you basically take a uh, armored car, you rip off the top of it, and you destroy uh, what would be the turreted elements, and then you just plump a six pounder gun in the front of it. And uh, this machine, as you can see, um, is based off the Morris Light Recon car. They've added a shell to it, and for some reason, Britain really enjoyed doing this. They would take standard vehicles and add an armoured shell and then try and put a massive donkey gun on it, which is basically what they've done here. So you would have, as I said, the Morris Light Recon car, you would add a six pounder gun into the front of it. And what this would end up being is um, a machine which would be pretty good for infantry support, but only having very weak armor from five to 14 millimeters of it. But because it was still light and because it was based off of a recon car, it still had a good speed of 50 miles per hour it was able to run around the place and if you thought this was weird if you thought this machine was one which was weird enough well or if you wanted weirder i suppose welcome to the next one uh this is even more crazy imagine once again taking a truck uh, this in the form of this one we have the thornycraft amazon and then adding a 50 millimeter rha uh, casing over it and then adding a 17 pounder to it this is what you see before you um, it is a standardized uh, truck very similar in concept i suppose to 
to something like the Archer, which takes the Valentine chassis and adds a 17-pounder to it. Here, they've taken a Thornycraft and just added a 17-pounder to the back, and of course added a little bit of uh, armor to it, but... The mobility, of course, suffered quite a lot uh, when it came to this machine for obvious reasons. But, oh well, it's a 17-pounder on a truck. The engine is 100 uh, brake horsepower, and uh, the weight is 15 tons, so you can guess that this thing struggled around the battlefield. The next vehicle is going along the same line, but using a slightly different chassis um, for its SPG nonsense. So this is the Elect. Now imagine if you take a Harry Hopkins, the first tank that we saw um, around the uh, rank 1 area, and you horizontally sword it in half. That is an Electra. Uh, you take off the turret, you take off some of the other parts, and then you add a little bit of a superstructure, and then you decide on the front you're going to add a 95mm howitzer. That is the Electra, an incredibly light machine, which was designed, um, once again, for infantry support, and uh, you would be able to fire stuff um, such as heat and also hesh out of this 95mm um, to you know, uh, do quite a lot of damage. Now, they made a bunch of different Electos as well. Um, it wasn't just limited to the 95mm. They experimented with many different uh, types of gun for this Electo chassis because, of course, um, it was just a, you know, it, it's basically just a very simple chassis which you can plonk a gun on top of. That was the basic idea. And they had a bunch of spare chassis lying around, so why not just add some guns to them? The next vehicle, we're actually going into more of the modern day now. This is, of course, uh, the... This is, of course, the Saladin, and uh, if you don't know what the Saladin is, it's um, a, I suppose, a more modern British vehicle. It has access to a 76mm um, Hesh uh, machine, and overall, uh, it actually does quite a good job at it. It has six wheels, and um, also the 76mm is a low-velocity gun. The proper name for it is the L5A1 gun, and it's pretty similar to the base model Squad. Scorpion gun as well. The armor on the vehicle, uh, it's 38 millimeters, um, at least on the front of it, and once again, 45 miles per hour being able to move around. Having the six wheels instead of the four gives it a lot of extra traction and also uh, decent mobility if used correctly and well uh, decent mobility but the main thing that it offers is as i said extra traction so you can deal with worse conditions the vehicle itself was designed in the 50s and in trials in 57 uh, so you can you know have a look at it so there's also a little bit of a bonus on this one as well in the form of this vehicle that you can see here this is um this is the saladin chassis which has access to the ZB2A9 ground tracking radar, um, which would allow it to track ground targets from a distance, so therefore basically be a scout vehicle. Unfortunately, it's unarmed, uh, so that's a bit of a problem, uh, but it is definitely something to consider. Then, the next vehicle is another Saladin, but this Saladin has access to a slightly different gun. This has access to a two-pounder, and the two-pounder is a high-velocity two-pounder. You can see the length of that barrel is pretty impressive, and this was the original prototype for the Saladin. Um, it had APDS, which penned 85 millimeters of armor at 900 millimeters at 60 degrees, so this thing would be able to go through quite a lot. At the same time as well, this was actually nicknamed the Saladin Pipsqueak, which I always think is kind of a nice little uh, nod to the machine itself. We're moving on to rank 4 uh, with some other vehicles, and this is where it gets a little bit chunky. So this is the Alvis or GKN Simba 90. It's a large vehicle, as you can tell, as you can tell uh, designed by Alvis as a liaison and patrol vehicle, but it was later repurposed into a 
a fire support vehicle and uh, now to be a fire support vehicle it needed to upgrade its weaponry and one of the ways that it upgraded its weaponry is by adding a 90mm Cockerel Mark III so the same gun that you see on quite a lot of uh, vehicles already um, one of the vehicles that you see this on is the Orbal 74 in the game that's probably the one which is not best for its Cockerel 90 and a ton of vehicles especially light vehicles use the 90 millimeter um, overall which is just a really really uh, good gun uh, firing some great ammunition unfortunately the protection of the machine is not great eight millimeters maximum so it would be resistant to stuff like machine guns but that's really about it and obviously the four wheel base on it and this thing is absolutely massive uh, just to put it into context this is not a small machine just to give you an idea of how big this machine is um, let's uh, just show you this picture here look at this monstrosity um, look at how jacked up its suspension is look at how high this thing is this is definitely going to be a large um, and going to be a large vehicle on the battlefield and also the driver is obviously going to have uh, going to have great view but also be able to get machine gun to death which is a bit of a problem then we move on to the more modern age uh, in the form of this vehicle that you see here this is the FV721 also known as the Fox and this has access to the 30 millimeter Raden this is a very similar gun uh, to the uh, warrior that we already have in game it might be the same version or it might be an earlier version of it um, so when we have a look uh, at this machine um, it, the 30 millimeter uh, at least the pom-pom gun at least the way I see it because it doesn't have a great velocity doesn't have a stabilizer or anything like that is mounted on this four-wheel vehicle and it's uh, basically seen as more of a scout vehicle or an anti uh, enemy light armor vehicle just go around and just hammer stuff with the gun and at the same time it doesn't have a ton of armor on it 25 millimeters at most but the main thing is its mobility of course when it comes to vehicles like this 65 miles per hour going around is not too bad for a machine and uh, because of that mobility i suppose in war thunder you might be able to get around the flank and have a little bit of fun with it and once again just like the saladin this thing also had a version Version, which was um, which mounted the ZB-289 ground tracking radar so technically it could uh, have a version which would be able to um, which would be able to uh, track stuff on the ground at the same time then we get to uh, vehicles which I would love to see in the game uh, to which uh, I'm kind of surprised we haven't seen yet if I'm honest with you uh, maybe the BRs are quite hard to work out just because of the um, just because of their unfortunate guns so the first one is the FV 101 Scorpion the CVRT this uh, vehicle is of course a suppose you class it as a light tank in the game and uh both of these are basically just hesh lobbers this first one that you see here it has of course um, quite a small caliber gun compared to some of the other stuff that we've seen and uh, its armor is pretty bad as well uh, around about 12.5 millimeters at best but you know it's uh, not you know a terrible uh, it's not a terrible setup it also has a very good top speed once again of 57 uh, miles per hour uh, so therefore you can see why maybe it'll be kind of hard to balance in this game with the low velocity gun which fires hash and also at the same time it's got really good speed but doesn't have a ton of armor on it i mean where where do you put it um it's it's a little bit of an interesting one and the next one is of course the well what i class as the upgraded version of the scorpion and this this one has access to a much more punchy gun. Uh, this one has access to a 90 millimeter, and it's also known as the Scorpion 90. And uh, this machine has access to the Cockerel Mark III, uh, which would have access to APFSDS. Um, the APFSDS would only pen around 100 millimeters at 60 degrees, but it's still APFSDS, so it still should do quite a lot of damage. It has the same uh, hull and the same arm 
armor and the same engine as the FV-101 Scorpion with the uh, smaller gun. So therefore, it would have very similar mobility, very similar armor, but obviously just a slightly better gun. Then we go into uh, some more modern, uh, more modern machines, looking at AFVs and also IFVs. This is the FV-43230. Um, this machine once again uses the Raden, which you'll find in the game already. I really don't like the Raden personally, not a big fan. Um, but uh, this is, you know, once again a mobile machine going at 44 miles per hour. So not as good as some of the other uh, things around, but it does have tracks instead of wheels. So therefore, on stuff like desert terrain in the game, it would be able to uh, be a little bit better moving around the place. And also, it does have 12.7 millimeters worth of armor around it. So not great protection but good enough. If you want a little bit of a side view of this machine, here you go. Uh, so you can see how big this machine is with the turret and also the massive chassis that it has. And of course, once again, this machine, just like all the others, could have that ground radar on it as well. If you wanted to put in either a premium uh, variant or a um, or a, I don't know, an event variant, or maybe just a different variant in the game to try and make these a little bit different from each other. Then we have something special. So imagine you take the FV432. So basically that chassis that we saw before, right? Just then with the Raden. Then you added a 120 millimeter gun to it. Yes, this is the Wombat. Uh, the Wombat uh, with all of the hulls, the FE-432s. Um, some of them, uh, some of them, obviously the turret was, was removed and they added a 120mm gun to them uh, from the top. It obviously had limited depression and also limited traverse because they just basically uh, fixed it to the top of the turret. This is probably a better picture just to show you uh, where it sits on the vehicle. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just a vehicle which has access to, you know, the standard chassis of the FV-432, but instead of having the turret, has access to the 120 on top. And if you didn't think that was uh, weird enough, uh, we have something which is even weirder. This thing is the Land Rover 2A Wombat, uh, the Land Rover 2A LWB Wombat. So you take, <laughs> you take a Land Rover, um, what you do is you cut off its top, and then you just add a massive gun to the back of it. I mean, why not? Why not have a little bit of fun with it? Why not have, you know, why not create a vehicle which is highly mobile and also uh, to be able to go around the place as a scout vehicle, but also have the firepower to be able to deal with, you know, a bunch of other stuff going on. This thing could go around 65 miles per hour and have access to some pretty nice firepower. And you can see it's in a few different variants here, depending on what Land Rover they decided to use. So always would be a little bit of fun always would be a great time. The next vehicle which is on offer is another Saladin, but this one is a slightly different one. It has upgraded firepower, I suppose you would say. Uh, you take the Saladin hull, the six-wheeled, uh, you know, armored car, and then what you do is you add a bigger turret on it with access to the 90 millimeter. The 9046 <coughs> Kernigan Mark VIII, <clears throat> and um, basically this is just a bigger gun than a lot of the versions uh, which you would generally deal with. It packs a punch, uh, it is able to pen 150 millimeters at 2000 meters and also it could even use better shells than what were tested. So the Saladin hull stays the same but they add an elongated turret on the top which also has access to a long 90. This would obviously increase its firepower quite a lot uh, overall which would be pretty nice. The next thing as well on the list is uh, we're running into tier 5 right now or rank 5 and this is the Humber Hornet. 
So the Humber Hornet is um, a vehicle uh, which uh, is just, I suppose, when when you have a look at it, it kind of reminds me of when we were looking at the story of the um, the 215, the FV215, um, the other day. Uh, the vehicle which was never built, but it was supposed to be a mashup of Conqueror ideas and also have the 183mm with a slightly modified Conqueror chassis and then a big turret on it. And then they just decided, well, ATGMs would be better for the job and also a lot more accurate. And then it was replaced by machines like this, um, which were designed uh, for a very, very similar idea. And basically, you would sit very far away with the ATGMs and you would be able to, um, you know, you'd be able to just guide the ATGM in and annihilate the Soviet heavy tanks as they decided to cross the Fulda Gap. Um, so... This is the uh, biggest uh, ATGM uh, with uh, the highest, uh, with the biggest explosive warhead on it as well, uh, which would at least um, be kind of interesting. And you only get four uh, ATGMs uh, on the vehicle itself, but I think generally that would be fine. And the armor itself, 60 millimeters max, with a decent speed of 39 miles per hour moving around the place, which wouldn't be, you know, too shabby. The next vehicle is moving on with the ATGM thing. And as you can see, this vehicle has access to something uh, very, very interesting. The ferrets, of course. So this is the Mark II-6. Um, it's a mobile Vickers Vigilant uh, with uh, four ATGMs. Uh, so uh, this uh, is an interesting ATGM. Uh, there are two uh, distinct variants. One with an extending probe uh, for increased pen and the CML variant, which has an oblique ring that normalizes the ATGM on impact so it strikes flat. That's kind of interesting. And the ferret itself had the ability to mount uh, either two vigilants uh, with two more stowed, so basically four in total, and also had a good speed of 58 miles per hour and uh, armor of up to 30 millimeters on the front, which would make it a decent ATGM carrier. Hopefully you wouldn't have to pop out to your top of your turret uh, to be able to deal with this. But at the end of the day, it is, you know, quite a low, you know, uh, a low looking vehicle. And <laughs> the turret just looks so small. I feel kind of bad being in it. Now imagine if you're playing Digimon or Pokemon and you want to evolve your vehicle. And uh, what you do is you take it in, you feed it some mushrooms, and then what happens? this this is the ferret mark 5 the ferret mark 5 has access to swing fire ferrets uh, missiles and in the form of atgms and also a new turret so this is an odd one uh, it only has access to four atgms um, but they're the swing fire you know atgms that we already have in the game and it's basically just a normal ferret armored car with the same engine and same armor but slightly different when it comes to the ATGM carrier itself and what it's able to hold. Just to give you an idea of the two vehicles together, this is the difference between them. So you can see uh, the ATGM uh, launches are slightly different, the ATGMs that are used are slightly different, and also to compensate for that on the later version, they have had to add extra structure to be able to support the whole setup, pretty much as simple as that. And then moving on with the ATGM idea, what we also have is, well, we can't get away from it, can we? The Wally turret. The GKN Simba Toe, as it's known. This is the same chassis as the Simba 90, which we saw earlier on, um, which, you know, had access to the 90 millimeter turret. And uh, now it has access to, you know, well, at least the, the turret, which you all know from the M901 in game, or the Wally turret, as it is. It's a twin elevator tow launcher and uh, all you ha all you do is mount it on top of the armored car and uh, yeah and pretty much as simple as that you're just mixing two ideas together which are uh, generally pretty interesting then we go into the warriors uh, so the warriors um, we already have one in game the fv510 now it's time to have a look at some of its upgrades so the first one is the warrior defense reconnaissance variant this is known as the warrior wreck and this features 
which is the Delco turret. It has a stabilized Bushmaster 1 gun, also twin tow launchers. And uh, this um, variant is lower in profile compared to the standard Warrior and also shorter in length. Uh, so generally it is a, just a smaller vehicle, has a bunch of different sensor equipment compared to the standard Warrior we have in game. And also um, it has access to pulse Doppler M-Star radar, which is kind of interesting. Thermal imaging as well, day-night sights, laser rangefinder, you know, all of the little tidbits that you see from modern vehicles. And all this extra kit requires the addition of a third crewman in uh, what used to be a troop area. Um, so this would uh, change from an IFV into an AFV, and it would also have composite side armor, which you can see on the side there, and also served as a base for the Warrior ADATs, uh, which would come later. The next variant of the Warrior that we could easily see is the Warrior LMT-105. This vehicle is pretty simple. What you do is you take a Warrior chassis and then what you add to it is a Roycat 105 turret. So we already have the Roycat 105 in game. Um, it was a prototype vehicle, you know, made by South Africa. Never, I don't think it ever went into service. I might be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure it didn't. Um, but imagine just taking the top, the turret of that and just plonking it on a Warrior chassis. That's basically what the FV510 Warrior LMT 105 is. You know, nothing crazy and uh, nothing too out of the ordinary and then we go into what looks like future tech this machine here this is the warrior 2000 delco and the Warrior 2000 Delco has access to the 30mm Bushmaster 2, also has access to the digital fire, digital fire control system, second generation thermal sights, a color camera, automatic tracking capability, and also a beautiful display for the driver. This vehicle is about 31 tons overall and does have in it the Perkins Condor CV8TCA diesel engine, which meant that it was up to 650 horsepower horsepower to compensate for the weight. So this machine was able to go 46 miles per hour while it was running around the place. So yeah, um, another development on the Warrior idea. I don't know how much is left of it when having a look at this one, but I suppose the general shape is still there. The next vehicle we're having a look at is the Warrior 2000 LSH, or the Land Systems Haglands variant. And this is uh, very similar to uh, the other warriors apart from the turret. Uh, the turret itself um, is the Haglund's vehicle E30 turret and it has access to a uh, Bushmaster 2 on it. Uh, so once again, very similar to some of the other vehicles we've seen before, just increasing its firepower going forward. And then the last one, uh, which we have on offer as well, is unfortunately this machine right here. And this is the LMT-105 uh, from the last Warrior 105, but it's actually on the Warrior 2000, if I uh, believe uh, that to be correct. So it seems to be uh, pretty much a Warrior 2000, which has been uh, mated with a 105 millimeter uh, on the gun itself. So yeah, over all, uh, it is also nice to see that. Moving on from the Warriors, since there is a lot of them, we move on to the Stormer. So yes, you may know the Stormer as an ATGM uh, based chassis, uh, but it also had a bunch of different versions as well. This is the Stormer 30, and what it is, is the Stormer 30 um, has a decent speed of 50 miles per hour, but it has a fully stabilized Bushmaster 2 gun as, and also twin tow launchers, uh, which would be able to fire the tow 2. So the, it would be in the tubes on the side of the uh, turret that you can see there. And also the turret was built by Otto Breda. Um, and also this vehicle has a protection from 14.5 millimeter HMG fire. It would be a, an IFV um, in its uh, totality. And with that, Access to the Bushmaster and also the ATGMs, I think it'll be a little bit more fun to use. Then we have another wheeled vehicle on our list, and this wheeled vehicle, as you can see, is this monstrosity here. And this is the Vickers Mark 11, uh, which is also known as um, the Viper. It's a six wheeled 105 millimeter. 
and uh, once again very similar to some of the other vehicles we've seen before this would be most similar to stuff like the Centauro or the Type 16 and would have armor protection to protect it from 12.7 millimeter gunfire um, from you know at least the front but the main thing is you have a wheeled chassis which would be uh, designed to carry you know this turret with the 105 on it so that's the basic idea of it you know uh, nothing nothing too crazy crazy just a lot of firepower on a very light chassis then we have the vickers uh, vfm mark 5 um, which uh, i believe is very similar if not the same as the vfm 5 that we have in game and this is the last vehicle in the tech tree it has the same turret as the mark 11 um, that's you know we looked at before it's tracked fully aluminium obviously we've talked about uh, the american chassis before that this thing uses it's able to go 45 mil uh, 45 miles per hour around the place and not a ton of uh, not a ton of uh, armor because it's made out of aluminium but at the same time quite a lot of speed then we go back into some more warriors of course because you know you've got to keep adding stuff to the top of warriors this is the warrior csp it's based off the standard fe510 warrior and uh, the csp stands for a capability sustainment program and what they did is they added a new gun to this thing this is the cat e40 auto cannon uh, which has uh, which is obviously a big upgrade over the radon they also added a bunch of composite side skirt armor to it as you can see on the side of this so basically upgraded weaponry upgraded armor not exactly sure if they upgraded the engine so it's probably a little bit more chunky then the last vehicle that is on our list is this machine right here this is the saracen concept 3 and basically what they did is they took a south african roy cat and they added a new superstructure to it um, with the british 77 millimeter high velocity gun uh, which uh, seems like you know an odd mix uh, because obviously it's um it's quite uh, an old gun compared to the chassis itself but you can see it's got pretty nice angle on it you know it's probably got a decent an engine and also a turret which should be able to go 360 so a very odd weird and wonderful design but overall a pretty nice vehicle so that is the british light tank line in concept um, from start to finish a lot of cool stuff 80 gem launches you know uh, some lightly uh, armored and lightly gunned machines then you have some 120s knocking about some 105s and of course enough warriors for you to shake your stick at thank you for Tarek for putting this together thank you guys for watching i hope you all have a wonderful day and i'll see you next time i'd just like to thank john ryman universe Conte Baraka, E Love Goat, Trigger Hippie, Eugens Terry, Ambrosius McClellan, Daniel Stanton, Martinez B. Young, and also Hans Fagellen, Sebastian Mizon, and Samuel Schlick for supporting the channel.